Angular 14 contains many great features, standalone components and type forms were probably the most talked about features. But there was also one that was heavily debated on Twitter, which was the inject function. In this video we will explore what the inject function is. The inject function in fact is nothing really new, it was already there since Angular 9, but its use cases were limited. So how could we use the inject function so far? So far we could use the inject function when generating a injection token for example. A typical use case where we often created a injection token was to get a hold of the window object. Of course we could also get a direct hold of the global window but this is only available in a browser and therefore would break when we use Angular Universal. So let's generate such a window token with the help of the inject function. So we generate a window token that is provided in root. Now in the factory function we can use inject to get a hold of the platform ID and we can then check if the platform ID is browser and if it's browser we will return the global window and otherwise a mocked window. This is a typical use case where we could already use the inject function since Angular 9. Another use case where we could already use the inject function was when using a factory function inside an injectables providers. When we have such an injectable, we could already use the inject function inside the use factory function. So, so what has changed with Angular V14? Well, the inject function became more powerful because you can now use it in various contexts. You can now use it in components, directives or even in pipes. So what does that mean? Let's take a closer look by creating a simple customer service. Our customer service is injectable and is provided in root. We have a customer service that has a customer stream property which is an observable of customers. To display customers, of course we need an Angular component that displays data. To get access to the customer service, we use classical dependency injection via constructor. So we create a private customer service property and we inject our customer service. So that's great. If we would now refactor this code using the inject function, we can simply create a private field, a class field, which we call customer service, and then we can use inject customer service. And we can get rid of the constructor. That's basically what the inject function is. So now, should you go ahead and refactor your whole application to use the inject function? Definitely no. The inject function is not here to replace the classic dependency injection. There is not much benefit that you gain using the inject function. In fact, the inject function even has some technical limitation because it can only be called inside an injection context. So what is an injection context exactly? Well, there are currently three injection contexts, a constructor, a field initializer, or a factory function. So we've already seen the factory function because we can already use the inject function inside the factory function since Angular v9. But now we can also use it for field initializers or during construction. So let's explore this a bit further because this is an important point. So we can safely use the inject function here. We can also safely use the inject function inside a constructor. But what about lifecycle hooks such as engine init? If we would use the inject function inside engine init, this would fail because it's not an injection context. Of course, the same goes for any other method, such as for example a click handler. In such cases, you cannot use the inject function. So at this point you may ask yourself, okay, are there then even scenarios where the inject function is useful? And yes, there are some scenarios where inject is useful. Let's take a look at one of the most beneficial examples. At the beginning of this video, we created the window injection token inside our app component and exported it. So let's say we want to use that for some reason inside our customer component. To inject the window, we can use add inject in combination with our window injection token and then we can type our window variable. This approach is great, but we manually type the window. We could also now change the type of window to string without getting any compilation error, even though our injection token is correctly typed. This could lead to some runtime errors that are hard to track down. 
Can we improve this? So we will create a private class field called window and to get the window we use the inject function in combination with our injection token. Now the beauty of this is that the window type is automatically inferred. So we can see that our window type now is of type window. This is one of the use cases where I think inject makes a lot of sense. So I would use inject over at inject. Another case where inject can be useful is inject allows you to create compositional functions. So imagine we want to create a backend request to fetch some customers. So currently we would do it in the customer service, so we would add a constructor and inject the HTTP client. But now, using the inject function, we can also do something like this. We can create a get customers function that internally uses inject to get access to the HTTP client and then uses the HTTP client to perform a backend request which will return the customers. So the inject function allows you to create various composable functions, but here you are again limited because you can only use it inside an injection context. I think one of the cases that I see for injectable functions is when you use ngrx. So you can create a function that returns you some data. So you could have a inject state function that takes some selector and internally it injects the store instead of HTTP client. So we would have inject store and we would of course also rename this variable to store. And then we would use store.select and we would select uh, based on our selector. That way you can reduce a lot of boilerplate. So there's one more scenario where I think the inject function is really useful and that's when you use inheritance. I was not sure if I should mention this in this video because I'm a strong believer that you should always favor composition over inheritance. But there may be some scenarios where inheritance makes sense or maybe you work on a legacy codebase that uses inheritance currently. So let's say we have a class animal and this class injects a animal service. Then we have another class, a class named dog that extends the animal class and it has a constructor where it also could possibly inject some stuff. Of course we have to call super. So what we have to do is we have to inject the animal service in our dog class as well and then pass it up to our base animal class. So that's okay. But now imagine we introduce a new class called foo service and at some point our animal class as well injects the foo service. In this case we would need to go ahead and adjust the dog class as well. In the meantime we maybe created 10 other classes that all extend the animal. So we would need to go through all those classes and check the same service and then pass it up via the super call. So what would happen if instead of classical dependence injection we would use the inject function inside our animal class. So let's refactor our animal class to use the inject function. So our base animal class no longer uses a constructor and therefore subclasses no longer need to inject the same services and pass it to the super call. So we can clean up our dog class by simply removing everything here. So that's a nice scenario where the inject function brings the power to save some boilerplate. So to summarize, the inject function is pretty cool. It offers some new possibilities and can definitely save you some boilerplate. I think I will mainly use it in places where I inject an injection token because the type is automatically inferred. <laughs> but I would now not go ahead and refactor everything because there is nothing wrong with classic dependency injection via constructor. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button right now to not miss any future Angular or JavaScript videos.